Welcome, my name is Phil McGrain, and I'm your elected clerk and the chief financial officer in Ada County. It is my pleasure to present Ada County's balanced budget for fiscal year 2021. This is not the typical way in which we'd present the budget. However, as with many things this year, we've had to make some adjustments to ensure we're all staying safe in these odd times. Our hope is that by sharing the budget this way, that we will reach a larger portion of the community than had we conducted this in the traditional format. First, I'd like to say thank you to several people who together have worked very hard throughout this budget process, and it would not have been possible without their collective efforts. First, to the county offices and departments. As you will see, our budget is collectively down, and it is because they took on the difficult task of seriously evaluating their budgetary needs. Also, the Board of County Commissioners, who have to make the difficult decisions during this budget process. Cassie Porter from HR and Bob Perkins and his team in procurement for providing guidance to departments and offices throughout this process. To the team in the clerk's office, our controller Kathleen Graves and Tim Sturgis, who together comb through all of the numbers to ensure they balance. Anthony Locksmith is our data analyst who is also the wizard behind the budget tool I'll be walking through today. To Lori Beck, who assists with personnel budgets, and Bob Hutchinson, software developer who works to ensure all of our financial systems work smoothly. All of these people have worked closely together to make sure we're submitting a budget that is not only balanced, but serves the needs of our community. Property tax relief has become a very important topic in our community, which is why this year's budget process started off with my request to offices and departments to be particularly conservative with this year's budget requests. The goal was to ensure that our county could still provide all the necessary services to our community without taking the additional 3% increase in base property taxes. In addition, the economic downturn caused by the global pandemic weighed heavily on everyone's mind as budgets were being prepared. Due to the diligent work of the elected officials and department heads, the county commissioners were able to achieve this goal and also able to address some of the major maintenance and facility needs of the county departments. Additionally, services to our citizens will be improved. Some of the highlights of the FY21 budget include funding to staff a second driver's license location, two deputies to patrol East Ada County, improved communications for fire, police, and EMS in rural parts of our county, improvements to our drug court treatment and health court, mental health court, parking and pathway improvements at Barber Park, the return to the issuance of passports, and increased funding for the master's facility plan to address some of our most pressing capital infrastructure needs. I am excited to report that the board was able to accomplish all of this while reducing the total county budget by $3.3 million and not taking the additional 3% in property taxes. Today, I will serve as your guide as we walk through the FY 2021 budget using our Budget Explorer. I briefly mentioned Anthony as the creator of this tool. I also wanna highlight it's been nationally recognized. This year, we received the Government Finance Officers Association Award for Excellence in Government Finance for our work in making our budget transparent and accessible, which we're extremely proud of. This effort, his efforts have enhanced our ability to share with the public where money is being spent down to each specific line item. This tool is available on the clerk's office budget website and we, we, and we encourage you to take some time to explore it on your own. To begin, let's meet the Ada County budget team. Ada County is comprised of nine elected officials, the Board of County Commissioners, Assessor Bob McQuaid, Coroner Dottie Owens, Prosecutor Jan Bennett, Sheriff Steve Bartlett, Treasurer Elizabeth Mon, along with myself as the clerk. We also have the team from the clerk's office. Statutorily, the clerk is tasked with overseeing the budget process and working with all the department heads and elected officials to ensure that we submit a balanced budget. We then have our business partners, Cassie Porter in HR, Bob Perkins in procurement, and Judy Morris, who is the commissioner's office manager and navigates all of these hearings. 
And finally, IT, who supports our financial system and helps make it possible for us to share these hearings, deliberations, and presentations online with the public. We have 18 additional departments in Ada County. Each of the department heads, as well as their contact information, is included here. This screen outlines the timeline we follow during the budget process. This year, the Board of County Commissioners and I asked department heads and elected officials to reduce the initial budget submissions by reviewing past savings in an effort to address property tax concerns and the need to help county employee wages. Departments were then allowed to adjust spending within their budgets as they needed as long as they stayed below the allotted funding amount. Any additional funding that would be needed was submitted as a supplemental request and had to be approved by the Board of County Commissioners. With that guidance, department heads and elected officials spent the spring establishing budgets that reflected their priorities for the upcoming fiscal year. All personal bu personnel budget requests were reviewed by the county's human resources team. They then submitted those proposed budgets to the clerk's office in May so that the auditor's division could compile and prepare the budget pr for budget presentations and deliberations. During the week of budget presentations, all offices and departments were asked to address what they had accomplished with the funding they were given last year and to make the case for funding in fiscal year 21. All of our budget presentations are listed here. If you hover over each date, you can see the presentations that occurred on each respective date and click on it to watch the presentations on YouTube. Next, you'll see budget deliberations. This is the time for the Board of County Commissioners to weigh the needs of the citizens of Ada County and county departments with the amount of resources available to fund those needs. Just like with the presentations, you can click on this link to watch the deliberations on YouTube. The total Ada County budget is $284,731,212. For comparison purposes, the FY20 budget was $288 million. That's a reduction of $3.3 million. As you can see below, 44% of that money goes towards public safety, 25% goes towards general government, 17% towards judicial services, 6.7% towards sanitation, 3.6% towards recreation-related services such as Expo Idaho, and 2.6% goes towards health and welfare. You can hover over each category to see more detail regarding which department receives funds in each category. This next section shows this year's major changes in both expenditures and revenue. There was a $9.9 million increase in personnel, which represents 58 new positions, as well as a 2% merit pool for Ada County employees and an increase in costs for health insurance. We have 19 major projects countywide, totaling $14.9 million. This is down by $4.6 million from last year. The largest upcoming project is the funding for our master facility plan, which totals $6.6 .6 million. The current priority there is the construction of a new coroner facility and expansion of the Ada County Jail. Some of the other projects include a roof repair to Expo Idaho and the remodel of our drug court treatment center. As you can see, the full list of projects is included in this section. As mentioned earlier, the county worked to avoid the need to take the additional 3% increase in base property taxes. The board did, however, decide to take $5.5 million available as part of the new construction role, which is a reflection of the growth in the valley. The new construction role is a calculation based upon the property value of new construction and development in the county. It's then multiplied by last year's levy to incorporate that growth into the tax system. This helps provide the funding for the additional services needed to support new residents in our community. In addition to not taking the 3%, Ada County also did not rely on any foregone taxes not taken in previous years. 
Ada County's current balance of foregone taxes is just over $8.6 million. At this time, I'm going to get into even more detail regarding the county's FY21 budget. This tool is a deliberate effort to be transparent with anyone who is interested in exploring our budget. One of the things I want to highlight is the lower right-hand section, which gives an estimate of the property tax impact to our residents. As you can see, you can input the value of your home and better understand exactly how your property taxes are being utilized in each department. It defaults to the median home value in Ada County, which is currently $363,000 according to the Intermountain MLS. The overall expenses are $284.7 million. Total revenue is $271.8 million with the use of an additional $12.8 million in savings. As I mentioned earlier, this is down from last year's budget of 288 million. This graph provides a history of prior year's budgets. If you click on any given year, the estimated amount of property taxes owed changes with it. So you can see how the taxes have adjusted throughout the years. You'll notice that's even though this year's budget decreased from last year's, the estimated amount of taxes owed still increased. This is largely due to the growth in the valley, along with the shift in taxes from commercial properties to residential properties. Looking at the budget distribution, you can see the detail between offices. Boxes are color-coded by the type of services, which is also listed on the left-hand side of the screen. Red, for example, is general government, which includes operations, the assessor's office, the commissioners, HR, and IT, to name a few. Here you can see that 21.4% of general government funding goes to operations. If you hover over any given office, you can see the distribution between personnel and operating costs. In addition, you can see that the estimated property tax has shifted to $187.22 which illustrates how much of that tax bill is allocated specifically to general government. In addition, you will see how these services are funded. Property taxes make up the largest funding source for general government, followed by department revenue, other government agencies, and the use of savings. As you click on any department or office, you will see the description of what their functions are, as well as highlights of their budget. As I mentioned earlier, the FY21 budget includes funding for, to staff 12 new positions at a second driver's license location. As you can see on the Sheriff's page, it is listed as one of the highlights. This will dramatically decrease wait times, which will in turn improve the experience for our residents. It is also one of those functions that we have heard the most about needing to improve from the public. The sheriff will also be adding two new patrol deputies to the area around Lucky Peak in order to decrease response times to calls for services to that area. Heading over to the clerk's office, I'm particularly proud because collectively across all six divisions, our budget is down by over $6 million. You'll notice in our highlights, here we're funding two passport clerks. Ada County has not issued passports for over a decade, and we're excited to begin offering that service again next year. As you can see, most of this portion of this office is funded from department revenue, which will also fully cover the two additional passport clerks. The problem solving courts will make some improvements to their building this year as well as hiring three peer support specialists who will help individuals suffering from substance abuse and mental health issues. During the budget presentations this year, we heard powerful personal stories from successful graduates of the Drug Court program. These programs are funded from department revenue and the Supreme Court, along with the use of savings. Operations has a busy year ahead of them with lots planned for buildings and capital improvement projects. Some of those projects include security access and camera upgrades to the courthouse, rooftop, rooftop repair to the aging juvenile detention center, and needed replacements for HVAC equipment at the jail. In order to support these projects and ongoing maintenance of our aging facilities, 
they will add eight positions to their team. Now I'm going to shift gears and show you even more detail in regards to the county expenses. What we just looking at was a budget overview. This page gets into the specific line items. On this screen, you can see any given expense for the upcoming year. The blue represents personnel, and the yellow is all of our operating expenses. This page also includes the top five line item increases and decreases compared to last year's budget. You can look at either by dollar amount or percent change. Staffing represents the biggest increase, which includes the 2% merit pool for employees and the 58 new positions. The Indigent Services Division of the Clerk's Office saw two major decreases in indigent medical and involuntary mental health line items, which is a direct result of Medicaid expansion. This page, like others, can also be used to drill down into any of the specific budgets. For example, here is a look at the expenses within the Commissioner's Office. Next, on this page, you will see the makeup of our revenue. Ada County gets 56.5% of its revenue from property taxes. The county also collects revenue from fees that are paid, for example, trash collection. The red band represents revenue we get from the state or other governmental entities, for example, sales tax and liquor tax. Given the current state of the economy, we did make adjustments to our anticipated revenue to be conservative in our approach next year. Similar to the expenses page, here you will see the top five increases and decreases to our revenue on the right hand side. On the top of the screen, you will see our total revenue is up 1.8% from last year for a total of $271.8 million. The final page of this explorer is the credits page, which includes all of the people who help make this possible to provide all the information to our community. It is also some additional resources, including the master's facility plan, a video library of budget presentations, budget deliberations, and the public hearing that took place during the budget process. All of this information is available to the public on our website. For anyone who would like to explore the budget tool on their own, please visit this web address. In summary, this budget addresses the maintenance of county facilities and technology and improves some of the services like driver's license, emergency communication in rural areas, and the issuance of passports for the first time in many years. The county was able to accomplish all of this while also limiting the increase to property taxpayers. On behalf of the Board of County Commissioners and the other elected officials, we appreciate you taking the time to join us today as we explored Ada County's proposed FY21 budget. Public feedback on the county's budget is important to us. If you would like to make a comment regarding the Ada County budget, please reach out to us by contacting budget at adacounty.id.gov. The commissioners will meet to discuss adopting the fiscal year 2021 tentative budget in an open business meeting on July 28, 2020 at 9 a.m.